This is a video covering standard cube notation, which is how you record moves that we do on the Rubik's Cube. This video will cover both the American slash European and Japanese notation. Um, this will work for all cubes from the 2x2 to the 7x7, or above, if it's on the computer. So, I'll just get right into that. The faces that we look at are in reference to you. So whichever way is facing up in reference to you is the you layer. Whichever way is facing you is the front or the front layer. And therefore this is right or R, left or L, D for down, and B for back. A capital U would indicate that you turn the U layer 90 degrees clockwise, like that. A capital U with a little apostrophe after it, which is what we call prime symbol in science, would indicate that you turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise as such. And obviously, a U with a 2 after it would be 180 degrees in either direction. Although sometimes it is specific, but it doesn't have to be. So that works for all of the faces on the Rubik's Cube. For example, F2, R prime, D, and so on. We also have a notation for the slices on the Rubik's Cube like this. This is the M layer, this is the E layer, and this is the S layer. This is an M, and this is an M prime. This is an E, and this is an E prime. This is an S, and this is an S prime. That notation is common for both American and Japanese type of notation. So from this part, point forward, I'm going to be talking about American, and then I'll tell you when I start talking about Japanese. For American notation, we use lowercase letters to show this kind of movement. So this would be a lowercase r. And this will be a lowercase f prime, lowercase d2. It's not that hard to understand. And so when we expand to a bigger cube, like a 5x5, five five, a little r instead refers to turning these two layers, which is similar, but not exactly the same. So therefore, little l2, lowercase f prime, and so on. Now this part's a little confusing. If in front of the capital letter there is a 3, 4, or 5, then you turn those number of layers. Like for example, if there is a 3U, then you would turn 1, 2, 3 layers on the top, like that, which includes the slice in the middle. If you had a 4R, then you would turn that. If you had a 3F2, then you would do two, two turns on the 3F layers. For rotations of the cube in American notation, we use it in reference to the axes. This is the Y axis, this is the X axis, and this is the Z axis. And we look at it using U, F, and R. So if there is a Y, you turn it like this, like the U layer clockwise, y prime, counterclockwise, x axis, x, x prime, z axis, z, z2, z, z prime, and so on. For Japanese notation, however, it's a little bit different. If we wanted to notate this move, we would have a uppercase r and the lowercase w following it, which stands for wedge. I don't know why. So this would be a uw, an fw prime, and so on. You can figure it out from there. And so it's the same with the 5x5 five five also. dw, dw prime, lw prime, lw2, lw prime, and so on. And just as with the American notation, if you wanted to notate this, you would do a 3RW. 
In Japanese notation, you also use lowercase letters to signify cube rotations. And they're in reference to R, F, and U. You would never see a lowercase L, B, or D in Japanese notation. So this would be a little r, little r prime, little f, little u2, and so on. And that's most of the cube notation you did, you, that you need to know. There is some debate on whether a lowercase letter on a big cube should signify this or this. And so there's a little bit of controversy over that. But for the most part, this is the standard notation. And even if it is different, you can probably figure it out.